Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to explain one of the real-time project exercise that is how to build ETL pipeline to load data from Azure SQL to Azure Data Lake Storage. This is one of the common requirement in most of the Azure Data Engineering projects. This uh, exercise consists of three stages. In the first stage, I am going to extract the data from Azure SQL. So, so the extraction would contain fact and dimension tables. We are going to use JDBC connection to read the data from Azure SQL. So at the end of the read, we are going to create data frame for dimension and fact tables. In the next stage, we are going to transform the extracted data from Azure SQL. So in this stage, we are going to apply business rules. For this demo, I am going to perform simple transformations such as I am going to replace the null values with some default value in the dimension table and I am going to remove the duplicate records from the fact tables. Then I will join fact and dimension tables based on joining key. Once join is done, finally I will do some aggregation to get some meaningful output at the end of transformation stage. So moving further to next stage. This is the last stage. I am going to load the transformed data into Azure SQL, Azure Data Lake Storage. So for that, first we have to create a mount point. Once mount point is done, then we can load the transformed data into Azure Data Lake Storage in the form of Parquet file. I have already posted one video how to read data, uh, read data from Azure SQL. If you haven't watched, I highly recommend to watch that video. Similarly, I have posted one separate video how to integrate Azure Data Lake Storage with Databricks, how to create mount point and how to access uh, files in Data Lake Storage that I have already covered in that video. If you haven't watched, I highly recommend to watch that video as well. Now let us jump into our demo. This is my Azure portal. I have logged into Azure portal. Coming to my resources. I have created a storage account that is called ADLS Raja Data Engineering. Within that, I have created a container that is called container underscore Raja Data Engineering. Within that, I have added some uh, one simple test file that is world population data. Anyway, we are not going to use this one for our exercise because Azure Data Lake Storage that is the target for us. So we are going to load the transform data into this location. Coming to Azure uh, SQL, I have created one SQL database that is using Adventure Work as a sample database. So this is the SQL database ASQL iPhone Raja Data Engineering. Let me log in into the database. I have logged into the database and there are many tables. So for this demo, I'm going to use the dimension table product. Let me get the data from product table. Here you can see the product table and I'm going to use uh, sales order detail as a dimension, sorry, as a fact table. The previous one product that is a dimension table and sales order detail that is a fact table. So this is the data. So basically I'm going to replace the null values in this uh, dimension table. Here you can see, you know, there are many dimension, uh, many null values for columns, so size and weight. So I'm going to um, replace the null values with some default value. That is the operation I will perform in Databricks. And coming to fact table, I will, uh, I will remove if there is any duplicate. Once that is done, then I will join these two tables based on product ID key. Here we have product ID, same, we have product ID in product uh, table also. Then after that, I will perform some aggregation to get um, uh, measure value such as you know, total sales. I want to get sum of um, total line total. So for that, I will um, write some logic. Once these transformations are applied, then finally we will load the data into Azure Data Lake Storage. Let me jump into my Databricks workspace. 
the cluster my cluster is up and running so i have already created a notebook for this pipeline this pipeline consists of three stages as i told earlier step one it will extract the data from azure sql so for that we will use the jdbc connection then we will read the product table and creating a data frame similarly we are reading sales table creating a data frame once uh, extraction is done then the second step we are going to transform the data so for that first i'm going to clean the dimension data by replacing null values with some default value also i'm dropping duplicates from the fact table these are the cleansing operations i'm performing after that i'm uh, performing join okay so i'm performing left outer join and after that i'm just um, uh, selecting the data that we are uh, selecting the columns that i'm interested in then after that i am performing aggregation to get some meaningful output to get uh, sum of uh, line total once transformation is completed i am going to load the data into azure data lake storage so this is uh, step 3 first i need to create a mount point in order to integrate with azure data lake storage through databricks so that what is done here then after that i am just checking if uh, my mount point is working notice uh, reading the files from uh, azure data lake storage so simply i am putting listing command so here we don't have any data other than world population uh, file csv file so to list on that one once that is done now my aggregated in my previous uh, transformed stage i created data frame aggregated one so i am going to write that data in the form of parquet this is how we can write the data in the form of parquet if you have to load the data in the form of csv then we can use this code that's it that is the end of pipeline so let me execute all the steps one by one first extraction uh, stage let me create the jdbc let me execute um, this, this step to create jdbc connection execution is done in the second step i'm going to read the data from uh, uh, product table okay so i'm using jdbc connection it's a spark data frame reader i'm using jdbc connection and um, uh, i'm reading the database table that is uh, product table sometime back i have shown i have shown you the product table that i'm going to read let me execute this stage so this will create data frame and at the end of the execution it will display the data for our reference okay it's done here you can see as i told earlier now we can see many null values for size and weight so we are going to replace these null values with some default value so let me read one more table for uh, fact so again i'm using the save jdbc connection but this time i'm reading sales order detail table so it will create a data frame df underscore sales and it would be displayed let me execute so execution is successful you have created two data frame and we are moving to next stage i'm going to transform the data as per my business rules in your real-time project you would have different set of uh, business logics that you need to perform in this uh, stage just for this demo i have created i have uh, given very simple steps in the first step i'm going to replace null values in my product dimension um, data frame so i'm going to create a cleansed data frame i'm calling it tf product cleansed and that is based on this tf product table so in order to replace null value we need to use this syntax na.fill i have already posted one video to handle null values in any data frame so if you want to get more information you can refer that video so here basically for the size column i want to replace if there is null in size in size if you are going to get null value then i am going to give default value m similarly for weight if there would be any null i want to give default value of 100 that's what i'm doing here okay size m weight would be replaced with 100 so at the end of the execution it will display the data let me execute here we can see now now we have many m and similarly you can see you know many hundred these are the default values earlier we were having null values for these uh, columns so coming to next transformation i'm going to drop duplicates from the fact table so i'm going to use df sales uh, data frame and the function to replace to drop duplicates is drop duplicates let me execute and it will display the data at the end of execution 
So now from the fact table, we have removed all the duplicate records. Now we have cleansed uh, fact and also dimension data frames. And the next step, next step, I'm going to perform join. So I'm going to perform the join here. You know, the sales cleansed, I'm joining with product cleansed. So the joining key would be product ID from both data frames and I'm performing left outer join. And then finally, I'm selecting only the columns that I'm interested in. Let me execute this one. So the joining is completed and now we got the data. Here, if you look at for uh, product, uh, the, the combination of columns, product ID, unit, uh, uh, sorry, product ID, the name, color, size, weight. You know, these are same 858 and here it's off finger, black, small, 100. So basically, I want to perform aggregation. You know, if uh, these combinations are the same, then I want to aggregate line total. So in the next step, I'm performing aggregation. So based on this uh, data frame, I'm doing group by, you know, for the combination of these columns, product ID, name, color, size, weight. Then I'm doing sum of line total and I'm giving some meaningful name for this. Okay, I'm renaming some total sales. Even we can use alias to rename but in this case i'm using with column renamed so at the end of this execution little here you can see you now there are 542 records now after performing aggregation it will go less now aggregation is completed now if you look at the number of records it's 142 and similarly for the same combination of finger black small 100 you know it's only one record we are having and that is completely aggregated so if you look at above now for this particular combination, you know, there were three records. It was, you no, know, it was containing values 58, 29, 88. And if you're going to aggregate these three, then it would be equivalent to this value 176. So this is how we have performed the aggregation. Now aggregation is done. So we have extracted the data and transformed the data. And in the last stage, we are going to load the data into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, first we have to create a mount point. In order to create mount point, we have to pass three parameters that is source. So I'm going, I have already taken my uh, URL, my uh, storage account URL from my storage account. Then the, here mount point, you know, we can give any name. So here for testing purpose, I'm creating ADLS slash MNT slash ADLS underscore test, but we can give any name. Then after that, in the extra config, we have to give our account uh, URL and also corresponding key we need to supply access key. So I have already posted one video. If you want to retrieve these values, you know how we can get from the Azure portal. So if you want to get more information, you can refer that video. So let me execute this stuff. It's creating mount point. True, which means mount point got created successfully. Now I want to check if Databricks is able to read files from Azure Data Lake Storage. So I'm giving listing command, DB utility listing command, DB utils dot FS dot LS. I'm giving my mount point location. So let me execute. So it is uh, displaying the data, world population data dot CSV. This is the only file currently we are having. So this is the only file we are having in our storage location. So Databricks is listing properly. So we can confirm, you know, Databricks is able to read or write files from ADLS. So in the next step, you know, in our, my, in our uh, previous stage, we have created a data frame df underscore aggregate. So that data frame I'm going to read in the form of parquet file. So this is the syntax. In order to write the data, we have to give data frame name, then write format. I'm going to write in the form of parquet, then uh, save. I want to give my mount point within the mount point i want to create one folder adventure work parquet so even though there is no folder at the moment now this particular process will create the folder and will create a parquet file for this aggregated data for this aggregated data so let me execute so execution is in progress execution is completed now so let me get into my data lake storage container so let me refresh then we will be able to see the new folder got created now here you can see adventure work park this is the folder we supplied in our uh, uh, databricks uh, notebook 
so let me open here you can see you know it has created only one part file basically while writing the spark default parameter would be 128 mb so if uh, the file size is lesser than that then it will create only one uh, partition file so here we can see you now there is only one parquet file that got created so it has given a name you, here you can see it's in parquet format so let me click on that parquet that is not human readable file format so we cannot read the data so this is actually containing the aggregated data so uh, let me do one thing in order to read the data let me execute in the form of csv also so i'm going to write the data in the form of csv i'm going to create one more folder that uh, that would be called adventure work csv let me execute this step so execution is successful now let me get into my container now we can see adventure work csv this is the folder let me open here we can see there is one partition file got created now all others are um, you know other uh, log related information this is the actual data file this is in csv format let me open this file csv it's a human readable format so we can see the data here you can see now this is the data we have produced in our aggregate data frame that we can see here see here this is the data we have produced and the same result we can see in the csv file so this is how we can read the data from Azure SQL and apply some business um, transformations then finally loading into Azure Data Lake Storage. This is the end of the pipeline. I hope you understood the end to end uh, process. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment. Also, please subscribe this channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button. Thank you.